Ghost movement has always been the most complex part of Pac-Man. In the original game, each ghost had its own algorithm and pattern that would dictate its behavior in the maze, and they would also go through phases of just wandering around and chasing after Pac-Man. All of that is a bit more complex than the scope of these videos, so we're just going to settle for having the ghosts randomly wander about. But since we have separate objects for each ghost, you can tweak what we're going to do here and give them individual personalities in your own game if you want. Now we don't just want to give them completely random movement because we don't want them turning around and going backwards. We only want them moving forwards throughout the maze. Now there is sort of an established way of doing this, but I ran into some problems trying to implement it through drag and drop, which would cause the ghosts to just randomly go back and forth before moving on for some reason. Luckily I discovered another way of doing this which I think is pretty clever. Basically when the ghost comes to an intersection it calculates a number based on which pathways before it are open. So assuming a ghost is coming in horizontally, if there is not a wall in front of it we'll give that space a value of 3. If there's not a wall below it we'll give that a value of 1 and above it we'll give a value of 5. So it's going to add up all the numbers of the spaces that are open and move according to that. So for example, if only forward is open, we'll get a number of 3. If only down, a number of 1. Up will be a number of 5. If forward and down are available, we'll get 4. If up and forward are available, we'll get 8. If only up and down are available, we'll get 6. And if all of them are available, we'll get 9. If none of them are available, we'll get 0, and the ghost will just go back the way it came. So open the object ghost parent and this is going to include a lot of actions so I'm going to make heavy use of comments. The first thing we need to do is make an alarm that is going to reset our ghost either at the beginning of the level or when it changes from an afraid ghost into a normal ghost. So add event alarm alarm zero. I'm going to come to control just leave a comment that says this is where we will reset our ghost. So I'm going to come to set variable. We'll set is underscore afraid to false. And we will set the variable ghost speed to 4. To get this to start at the beginning of the game, let's real quick open our object message. And in the alarm 2, when we activate the moving, come to main 2, set alarm, drag that underneath the global can move and we will set the object ghost parent alarm 0 to a step of 1 so it will activate this almost immediately once the game begins. So we can close that and close the object message. Now we'll set up the framework for making our ghosts move. So let's add an event, step, and we're going to choose end step. Every step game maker tries to do all of the actions that it can in a specific order by telling it to go to the end of the step, this is putting all of the actions here after most of the other events have been calculated. The first thing we need to do before we move is make sure that we're aligned to the grid and that we can actually move. So come check grid, set this to 32 by 32, then we'll test variable, see if global dot can move is equal to true. I'm going to bring in some blocks. And because there are going to be a lot of actions in this event with a lot of blocks, I'm going to make heavy use of comments so we don't get confused. So I'm going to drag one in now and just say that this is the end of everything. Then I'm going to update its movements. So come to move and move free. Put that above the end all. We will set the direction to its current direction and its speed to ghost speed. Whenever you use the move fixed or move free, it sets that direction and speed as a constant, meaning that it will not change unless you put in another action to update it. And so every step we're going to be updating that to make sure that we are moving as we should be. We also want to reset the mechanism that I talked about earlier with choosing our direction. So come to control, set variable, we'll set which way to zero. So now every step it'll have a clean slate for calculating. But to get the proper calculation we have to determine if we're moving horizontally or vertically. So I'm going to bring in a comment and this is going to be the beginning of the horizontal 
movement. And to determine if we are moving horizontally, we'll bring in a test variable, and we will test v speed being equal to zero. Because if there is no vertical speed, then we must be moving horizontally. We'll also set a comment as a placeholder for when we do our vertical movement code. But now to determine if we're moving vertically, we don't have to set a test for h speed being equal to zero. We can just use this one right here. Because in this test, there are only two outcomes. Either v speed is equal to zero, or it isn't. And if it isn't, then we are moving vertically. So we'll just come and use an else to tell us that we are moving vertically. OK, so now we need to draw some blocks underneath the vertical speed test. I'm also going to put in a comment to tell me that this is the end of the horizontal movement. And for right now, I'm just going to comment out the various actions that we will have to check for. So the first thing we need to look for is whether or not there is an open position. So this will be where we check for an open position. After we've done that and calculated our which way total, we then need to check what that number is. So let's bring in another comment after this. And this is where we will check which way. So now we just need to think about the various possibilities that this can result in. So we can have forward being open. We could have down, up. We could have forward and down. We could have forward and up. Up and down. We could have our three-way intersection. And there's a possibility that none of them will be open. We won't focus on the vertical stuff right now because we'll pretty much just copy and paste everything that we do here. But now we've laid out the framework for everything that we need to test for. Since that's going to be a bit of a long video, I think we can pause it here and we'll pick it up in the next one.